Center Stage for your presentation, Lemon Law, A Ray of Hope. Good afternoon, President, Postmaster of the Day, fellow members and guests. Every one of us here know that lemon is a type of citrus fruit. But I'm not sure how many of us here know there is a law named lemon, lemon law. When I first heard the lemon law implementation in Singapore, it sounded very funny to me. I was so curious to know why was this law named as a lemon law and not an orange law or something else. So I set out to discover where the term lemon was originated from. According to the online etymology dictionary, in 1906, to pass someone a lemon was a British slang, to pass a substandard article as a good one. I also found out one interesting advertisement published by Volkswagen. That was in 1960s. So it read, we pluck the lemon, you get the plums. Where Volkswagen reassured his customers that the lemons are weeded out in its vigorous quality control. Originally, this lemon law was an American state law, which provided remedy for car purchases. A similar lemon law was passed in Singapore Parliament in March 2012. This law is effective as of 1st September 2012. And this law is not the first of its kind. There used to be a law called Consumer Protection Fair Trading Act, which is in place since March 2004. The push for the act began with observable increase in the number of errant traders and unethical practices over the years. In the first six months of the year alone, Consumer Association of Singapore case received more than 1,300 complaints on defective goods, mainly on cars, furniture and handphones. The majority of the complaints were against the sellers who refused to repair or replace the spoiled goods. Previously, there was no common exchange policy across the retail. Sorry, I'm sick. Uh, that's why I'm Okay, uh, there was no common exchange policy among the retailers. Some retailers used to say that the refund can be done within seven days. And some retailers will say there is no strict refund policy at all. Under this lemon law, the consumer can report a defective item within six months of the delivery. And it is the responsibility of the retailer to prove that the defect didn't exist at the point of delivery. This lemon law provides a two-stage recourse for the consumers. At first stage, the consumer can ask the seller to repair or replace the spoiled product within a considerable time frame. But if this is not possible, then the consumer can ask move to the next stage and asking for the retailer to provide a complete refund or they can keep the product and ask for a discount. This lemon law is very beneficiary and most of the consumers in Singapore welcome this law. Personally, I also feel very happy about the law because when there was no such law, I would not bother to go to the retailer asking for a refund or exchange because I know the retailer will have a lot of excuses and will be waste of my time. And with this law in place, I would definitely fight for my right. This law also assures the locals and the tourists that the product they buy here is of great quality, which provides a very good image for the retail industry in Singapore. Now, we need to know what are the items that are covered under the law. As a consumer, this is more important for us to know what are the items covered under the law. All consumer goods, including second-hand vehicles, are covered. And when you buy a defective item or some display item on sale, you don't need to worry. This lemon law also covers that. The consumer, the retailer, cannot contract out his obligation by just displaying notice saying, we don't provide refund under any circumstances. Or he cannot say that this item is sold as it is. The retailer has a responsibility to tell the consumer that at the point of time, what are the defects that exist. And it is better for the retailer to document what are the defects. Then the retailer is not liable for those uh, 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 rejections of the goods. Other surprising thing is all the online transactions are also covered. But we need to take note that it's very difficult to exercise a judgment on an overseas trader who don't have any presence in Singapore. And finally, to my surprise, I also noticed the sale of pets is also covered under the law. So, having known that, what are the items that are covered under the law, we also need to know what are the items that are not covered under the law. Real estate property, 
all those rental and lease goods are also not covered under the law. Then services, of course, for the obvious reason that when the service is rendered, it is very difficult to refund back a service. So services are also not covered under the 11 law. Then all consumer to consumer transactions and business to business transactions also not covered. I find one interesting thing is favorable to the consumer is the consumer to business transaction is also not covered under the law. Just to give you an example, when you're trading a car to a dealer and this dealer sells your car to another customer and this customer identifies a car as a lemon, then the dealer who bought the car from you cannot seek recourse from you. So this is, I feel, as favorable to the consumer. If you have any doubts, whether you can make a claim or not, you can always approach the Consumer Association of Singapore case and seek guidance whether your claim is supportable and reasonable under the law. If you want to make claims, you should file a complaint with Small Claims Tribunal within one year of the delivery. Ministry of Trade and Industry and the Consumer Association of Singapore is doing a great job in organizing more than 40 seminars and roadshows to brief the consumers and retailers about the new law. One good news for you guys is the next seminar is being held on 12th November 2012 between 10 to 1 at 1 Marina Boulevard. The event details can be found in the case website, case.org.sg. So I see this law as a ray of hope for those consumers who have been kept in the tunnel of darkness by the unethical practices by these retailers. I would encourage every one of you to familiarize the provisions under the law and get the most benefit out of it. Back to Toastmaster. Just write at the bottom corner of your agenda sheet, and then we'll go around to pick up the, um, the votes later. And in the meantime, we're going to take a short break, about 15 minutes.